Welcome back to the Nickel and Dime Football Show. It's your boy Suds. We got the man Drew behind the wheels of steel. Listen, a very interesting slate of games. A lot of key marquee moments happened yesterday. Big games. Interesting outcomes, to say the least, and a lot of drama, which you know we are all here for on the Nickel and Dom Show. Make sure you like and subscribe. Get back at us in the comment section. Do all the things that uh, you want to do to get involved about your team sticking with us. It is week 11. Are we going to week 11, man? I don't even know. I just know it's almost Thanksgiving. Like and subscribe again. It's Nickel and Dom. Chaos indeed, Sean. Again, we keep coming back, saying it every week, but we had an instant classic this week. We had arguably the greatest yeah, we catch we've seen to date. Uh, I, I don't want to be a creature at a moment, but it was a damn good catch, though. It was, it was a, a damn catch. good catch. Yeah. It, was, it was the OBJ catch in traffic. Yeah, that it so. was. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. wasn't but, a TV, though. Right. We saw that instant <laughs> classic. We saw a lot of teams winning, getting back on track. A lot of teams burying themselves further down the totem pole. The playoffs are starting to shape up and then also not shaping up at the same time. It's amazing. Yeah, for for a lot of teams, Drew, and uh, it, you're, you're right, man. Like, I think we we definitely going to talk about it here getting into some of these games, man. But where where do you want to start? Because I feel like we have a lot to cover. You know what I'm saying? Like, where do you want to start this week? Well, let's go ahead and get into this Week 10 recap, and let's start. Quick shout-out. Don't really need to touch on it because it's it's a lost season still. But quick shout-out. Panthers winning on Thursday night behind Foreman, 130 yards and a touchdown. Great to see yeah. that man getting back and going after an abysmal Bengals game, which I, to give him credit, we were not trying to run the ball the majority of that game anyway. Uh, that's very true, man. I, and and not only that, but just the workload of your boy forming 31 rushes. They really leaned in yeah. uh, to him and, and didn't really count on PJ at all. And Marcus Mariota with another – meh game yeah. i mean that's you what know, you get from Mary man that's you, you, you know what you get and that's yeah what you get. a lot of people was definitely asleep during that game drew i like it was it was boring and y'all just took it over and y'all were at home too yeah. so good I good did for y'all man love the black the all black uniforms fantastic yeah. keep it going that needs yeah. to be our new thing that doesn't need to be a once a year three <laughs> times a year you figure they, they would do it more around. often yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Before we move on, Drew, how you feeling about like getting a win in, in, in the draft? I know like I know what you're about, your mission. I know what your mission is. How I've just des- I've decided that I'm OK with division wins. That's just where I'm at. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. still in that okay. offensive. I want my team to do good. I still want them to lose to get a higher draft pick. Yeah, we beat the Falcons. though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, division wins mean a lot more. So even if you like go through your division, that's only six wins. You're probably not doing anything anyway. But like you right. know, four and two, we talked about it. But. Yeah, if we go four and two, and that's our four <laughs> wins, and we still get a top five draft pick, what a way to be a bad team, <laughs> right? Right. right. I'll, take it. I'll take it. Right. Uh, well, let me flip that around on you, sir. And how did you feel about the Bucks getting, uh, dare we say, back on track, beating a top yeah. NFC team in Germany? Man, I like I haven't done the full circle pat on the back yet, but I just thought that we matched <laughs> up well with the with the Seattle Seahawks, man. And uh, they came out and, and, and corrected a lot of ills. You know what I'm saying? Like the rushing game was definitely something that we hadn't been doing. Consistency execution was what we hadn't been doing. And they did all of that. Um in in germany i guess it took going to a whole nother continent (laughs) to uh to get right man tommy tommy international no we can't call him tampa tom anymore nah four and oh tommy you know defense getting back on track getting healthy i think is is the key but um listen statement game we talked about it last week drew so good for the boys we're gonna talk about a little bit later too 
I think Tom Brady's in some weird like you remember the '90s show? Are you afraid of the dark? Oh, there absolutely. Was, there was one episode where the mirrors were still in the kids' youth, and it was a really old person, but he was able to stay young because he was stealing the youth from the mirrors. That's yeah, Tom Brady yeah. and Winnie. My man looked like like looked like a middle aged man when y'all were losing. Right. And all of a sudden y'all have won two games and my man's got some color in his cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe that's where the factory is over there in over there in Europe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's where the factory is. He went home, you know, got that, got that. Recharged. Got that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Now we back, kudos, baby. man. Kudos to Tommy getting back on track. Giselle's right. dating someone new. Maybe he is too. He got that off his chest, nothing. you know. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, oh. well, go ahead. Uh, no, I just I thought about it talking about Giselle dating. Like, I wonder if Tommy, you know, Tommy focused during the season, during the season. But I wonder now that it's out there, who is Tom's next? Like, that's going to be. You know what I'm saying if intriguing, it's, if it, right? If that's already how it's playing out in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, I don't know. So like, I'm, I'm no curious clue. to see who Tommy steps out with. <laughs> I don't know who's married and who's not in Hollywood. So I don't know who's going to be his, his next lady it's, friend. It's a big gray area. But you know, it'll be somebody and it'll be a an A-lister and we'll all be like. Right. Dude, can't wait. <laughs> Let's talk about this instant classic. I guess I'm throwing that around That's a lot, but it was. It was a great game. It was on. I kept me from napping. Towards the end of the first round of the game. <laughs> you hate it, but you love it. You yeah. Know? Vikings, uh, Vikings beat the Bills. Took them to took them to overtime. Cousins yeah. 30 for 50, 357 yards, a touchdown and two picks. <laughs> Allen kind of mirrored that. 29 for 43, 330 yards. Yep. A touchdown and two picks. Man, and and just like Drew turnovers in the worst spots right in the worst spots just like it, this game had everything it literally had everything drew like yeah it had everything we, we we got we got you know overtime uh and we did I get a tie that's nice and we didn't get a tie <laughs> but what it, you know like what to come into buffalo like that that vaunted buffalo area that home field advantage into just Go with them, go toe to toe, like not back down. And they drew, they were dead in the water at one point, right? They were yeah, dead in the was water. It two, two touchdowns. I think it was, it was, yeah, 17, might have been 17. And then that, that Dalvin Cook rush just like opened it up. Cause I was like, oh, Buffalo little, started, put, right? A little sibling rivalry. How huh? you think he had to yeah. up his brother on the other sideline? Had Show to. him who the older brother still is. Had to, had to. I mean, like the lip, the the younger cook definitely got drafted into a good situation. Like, yeah, good on good yeah. on the GM. But yeah, Dalbo still. That was like I've been here. Yo, 81, <laughs> 81 out the gate. They were they, Drew. They were dead, man. What you what you what you thinking about this game, man? I just think it was a a great and if like that's how big of a boost is that to yeah. cousins and the Vikings? You know, they're having their fun. Making yeah. their little their their social media videos with everyone wearing the the chains. I think it was Jefferson's turn this past week, yeah. wearing the chains in the videos. Like they're just having fun, man. They're feeling themselves, and they can rod this deep deep into the playoffs. I think it's it's just more interesting. They're feeling this way because of the plays that they're making. I think at this point they're just expecting everybody to for something to happen good. Like yeah, Pat feeling got involved. Thielen got involved. Pat P with two picks out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, he and looking like time. vintage, vintage Pat P, the way that he was stepping in front of the ball, mirroring Gabe Davis. It, refs got to be better with the catch, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like with the, with the Gabe Davis catch that that shouldn't have been. Um. Oh yeah, that does suck. I mean, at least the ball don't lie. Vikings still get it. Don't the yeah. it don't. And Justin, we have to mention Justin Jefferson as good as he was and has been. Um. Man, I like. I'll I'll be honest. Like, well, what do you do we, to stop him at this we, point? Keep him in mind for a segment that we got coming later on in the show. Make sure you stick around for that. Uh, got a nice, interesting segment called "Roll the Credits," where we have our comeuppance. So yeah. we gonna talk about it, man. Drew, what you got? All right, uh, a couple AFC teams keep winning. Uh, Titans beat the Broncos. Chiefs beat the Jags. Dolphins destroy the Browns. 
uh, which game um, outcome surprised you the <laughs> most, or was that all just status quo on that? I think the way that the Dolphins kind of took that game over, you know, I, I thought that they were going to win. The Cleveland is really just kind of holding place at this point, trying to make sure they put good stuff on tape for when Deshaun gets back, get, to get ready for that. But Miami just took over this game, and they did whatever they wanted. Yeah, and they're they're looking like they're rolling right that at the offense, right time. Man. Oof. Yeah, Ooh, we yeah. that offense. Yeah, I thought that it was super interesting. Did you mention you mentioned Kansas City, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I thought it was super interesting how we are getting the Kadarius Tony show early and often. I loved it, man. You know, I was so he adjusted his glove before he jumped up and caught that ball. Like my man is like sinking back. He separated from the defender and he's like, all right, here we go. Time to go to work. Yeah, Uh, man. He, you don't really often get that, that type of a player in the perfect offense. And I don't know, like, it seems easy to say now that he's doing what, but he might just be magic. Yeah. The way that he was kind of doing his thing. It's going to make them miss Tyreek Hill a lot less if he continues this production. Yeah, good good point. But because uh, now he's definitely got to step up. I mean, Schuster Smith Schuster got destroyed. That was he a did. scary hit. You always hate when it the was. hands go up. Um, yeah, so a lot of I, I, a lot of, a lot of receipt. you got to hope he at least sits out a week or two. I mean, when today's NFL, we'll see him practicing tomorrow. Yeah. But <laughs> no, nah, I think he probably he probably gonna have to take at least two to three, eh, at least two to three. Um. But yeah, he he will be back uh, eventually. But it was still good to see. I've seen talk. I guess talking about the football aspect of it, that the other receivers were pretty easily involved. You know, Travis Kelsey, I Hardman think he had stepped one, up. Yeah, to wanted to MVS had a TD. So um, I don't know, man. They're they're looking AFC looking strong, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready for the inevitable shootout between the Chiefs and the Dolphins. <laughs> right. We're, I hope we get at some point in this uh, playoff. Uh, Moving on, uh, your boy called it. Told you they uh, the Colts had uh, were at a crossroads. They either could not uh, rally behind their new coach, you know, chalk it up to he didn't deserve it. He's an outsider. These guys have been with us. They got skipped over, and he he or they could rally behind this dude and give him a chance and let him uh, see what he can do and. That's what they did. And it looks like Jeff Saturday was very grateful and he was very respectful and he it leaned on the coaches that had been there. And I feel like he went about it the right way. And he put Matt Ryan back in the team rallied around him. He went 21 for 28 for 222 yards and a touchdown. He protected the ball. He didn't turn it over. Jonathan Taylor came back with a vengeance, 147 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Are the Colts Colts back in the back throwing their name back in the hat? Uh, I think we we need the TBD TBD <laughs> that way. It's been yeah. TBD. I they think just it, play it, the Eagles this week, man. No worries, right? Exactly. So now you really get a welcome to the NFL moment. Um, and him being a former analyst, he should know very well analyzing the league how dangerous his team is. He shouldn't have to be a newly head coach to realize that. Right. But Drew, uh, I think you nailed it, man. You really nailed it because uh everything you said is just there was a lot of a lot of storylines around this team, and they come into this game against a dangerous Las Vegas team. I mean, you know how high I was on Las Vegas at the beginning of the season, and they proved to be just as dangerous with this, you know, arguably close game coming down to it, but they didn't need Matt Ryan to do a lot because Jeff Saturday leaned into the run, man. Like they got Jonathan Taylor involved, 22 rushes. They didn't hesitate doing that. He did everything that he was, he didn't do any, he didn't try to reinvent the wheel, I guess. is what Yeah. I'm this to is say. the Colts team. We thought we were going to get all right here. I mean, granted the defense has bended a little bit more than we thought, but in on a good side, Buckner and uh Ngakwe are starting to to gel a little bit more as teammates are getting to the yep. quarterback, they're getting pressured. I mean, they had they had David they had they, I keep calling him David. They had Derek Carr <laughs> and uh they had David Carr's brother Derek Carr uh, <laughs> in tears on the podium. So uh, yeah, they, they 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 did enough to irritate him and they got a win. And yep. uh the Saturday era <laughs> begins with a W in India. 
It does, man. And and a lot of big plays by a lot of big people uh, on that that Colts defense, talking about Stephon Gilmore, when you needed it at the end of the game. Yes. Yeah, Bobby Okereke coming through with that big pass breakup, no flags. And that's the point I want to make about the Raiders is that it's the Devontae Adams show over there. Drew, like they're just, they need him to be that guy. And he is, nobody is saying that he's not, but like, where where's the tight ends where's the running back i mean josh, they did give uh josh jacobs 21 rushes 78 yards is respectable but give oh, man, credit to that defense up. Beat give up, credit dude. to that defense right so where is everybody else stepping up they have some stars they have some ability on this raiders team and they're just not doing it and i think that's what Derek carr is talking about you know that's fair that's fair um we got a uh, Packers run the ball down the Cowboys throat. So did not see that coming. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a close game, but I thought it was going to be more Rogers frustration and ultimately a Cowboys win, uh, which we saw early on. The Cowboys did a good job distancing they themselves. They were up by what? Two, two touchdowns, right? And uh, I, I just don't know. Well, the Packers happened. That's basically what happened. Like it looked like the old school Packers, the way that those young receivers stepped up christian watson hello you know like two tds they, they've been they've been they, had, they got a third oh day he had three yeah, yeah. Dang, that's he had all fun. three of rogers touchdowns damn that's yeah. crazy and aaron jones 138 yards on the ground and a touchdown um yeah the packers had a game plan and they, they did, did it. and, they and uh i i noticed a lot of analysts were talking about how how much they were running the ball was keeping Micah Parsons off the line. He had to sit back and be a linebacker to stop the run, which they still had trouble stopping the run, but he couldn't be a defensive end and cause havoc on Rodgers. Yeah, man, it was, it was kind of crazy, to, but they, as far as for, for, for my aspect of this game, like Tony Pollard, I'm glad that he got involved. Um, you showed what he, what he can do. CD Lamb was involved. Dak Prescott was just, he was he was okay you yeah. know like he was he it's been was just kind of okay. the narrative hasn't it? it well that they were they were really talking about the the national heads talking about Dak prescott just where he fits today it was a lot of chatter about that um uh, where them rush chants at huh i i have, <laughs> I have no idea but they are coming if you keep yeah. playing like this right drew i loved your point about the rushing game no uh, 24 rushes for air, uh, for Aaron Jones, 13, another 13 for AJ Dillon. They made it work. Uh, not only that, but what is, how interesting it is that the Colts, uh, the Packers and the Bucks all turned their rushing games around this past week and they all got wins. And that's what those teams need to do. Tom didn't have to do that much. Matt Ryan didn't have to do that much. Aaron Rodgers didn't have to do that much. 20 passes for Aaron Rodgers, arguably the greatest quarterback in the league, Drew. Yeah. That was all he needed. Dude, this season is blowing my mind, man, because the run seems to just disappear for long periods of time for certain teams. Even sometimes it feels like the whole league will take a week off from running the ball. Yep. And then when teams need that spark, they go back to it, and it all depends on if they're successful or not. Because there's no way the Panthers beat the Falcons on Thursday if Foreman doesn't run like he does. 31 rushes. Yep. I mean, if for as pass happy as this league is, you still need the rushing game, and you need it to work. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's a down year for the quarterbacks just across the board. Which is why why it means so much this season, you know? Yeah, outside of Patrick Mahomes, man, who's – Who's tearing it up? Like Josh Allen's even hit a little bit of a He was he hit a bump. Yep. Yeah. And he's been uh, they've been Lamar's done lot. great. Yeah. His a team's kind of letting him know. A lot of well, he's had and he he's had a buy, so he hadn't had yeah. another week to put bad yeah. tape out there, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. But uh Josh Allen, a lot of talk about him turning the ball over, man. And 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 people like the rose colored glasses are starting to come off just after these last couple oh, of performances. Sorry. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is playing it great. Too. So he is also black category. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, last game we'll talk about. We'll move on from week ten. But Forty uh, ers beat the Chargers on Sunday night. Jimmy G, game manager, nineteen for twenty eight, two hundred forty yards. Uh, they had two rushing TDs, one from uh, uh, McCaffrey, and I'm I, I did I, did Mitchell get one? I'm not sure. Did but they Mitchell... got two rushing touchdowns as a as a team. 
He did not. Yeah. No, he didn't. Garoppolo. <laughs> There we go. There it is. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. But, Drew, uh, I, Her- I guess. Go ahead. Herbert has another rough. Like he just doesn't have everybody to throw to right now. Twenty-one for thirty-five, one hundred ninety-six yards, touchdown and a pick. Uh, he just look out there looking for his buddies, and his buddies ain't there. Yeah, man. And I, I well, after the last couple of weeks, I thought I would get more from Gerald Everett, honestly, you know, like, but he only had two targets. I mean, two receptions on two targets ain't, ain't that bad, but only 23 yards. If a touchdown's thrown in there, yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right, right, you know, but uh, Austin Eckler, you know, was arguably the leading targeted guy with 12 targets. And, uh, I mean, when you're running back, leads the team in targets, that's never a good downs. song. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's never Check a good song. Check downs and screens. Yeah. So. That's it. All right, let's move on to some housekeeping notes. Let's do it. Panthers do it. quarterback P.J. Walker dealing with a high ankle sprain. Dreaded high ankle sprain. We'll miss week 11 versus Ravens Mayfield. Baker Mayfield back in that starting QB1 spot. Man, how do you think Baker feel? I saw, I saw some video of Baker being a very good teammate. Uh, like his coach said, head that he button was, people, like yeah, come on, calm yeah. down, man. <laughs> yeah, he might, he might, he might be concussed. You might need to get that down, man. He man. might not play, he might not clear protocol. Yeah. But no, I'm, yeah. I'm happy for Baker, man. I want to see what he, what he does. You know what's yeah. gonna happen? Baker gonna play himself into being a starting quarterback next year. <laughs> for who? The rest of the season. The rest of the <laughs> season. The rest of the season. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. So you gonna get a contract? That's how no, they. You, that's yeah. how they do. I'd be that's perfectly fine if he wants to spot start next year. With a rookie taking over, yeah, he's he's in the perfect position now to Kirk Cousins the rest of his career right now. Uh, yeah, or you Sam know? Bradford, flex contract <laughs> God yeah, contract right. God Sam right. Bradford. Uh, Bucks running back Lenny Fournette uh, dealing with a hip issue, likely to be okay after the bye week. So week of rest, he should be good to go. Even though it looks, if I, if you talk should to be. Suds over here, losing be. his <laughs> losing his RB one spot, quick. Woo. Yeah, man. Like, oh man. I guess just a quick note on Leonard Fournette. This should tell you everything. But uh, Leonard Fournette after the game posted just a shot of him passing the ball. Just a shot of him passing the ball. Stated QB two. Uh, we all know what happened on that play because he threw a pick. And the very first comment after he posts, great post by Lenny. Even better comment. RB2 was the comment. Uh, oh, that says anything. Oh, if that says that's anything. That's hilarious. So, uh, Rashad White season. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, we alluded to it earlier in our recap. Browns QB Watson set to rejoin practice. He can start week 13 against Houston. Hey. All right. Well, I mean, damn. I thought we was going to get uh, Watson coming back for the Bucks, but not the week thirteen. They they want to save. Him. They want to save. Get, him. You get Brissett's last week. <laughs> yeah, they want to save him. We gonna we we gonna try to send Brissett out in style. Oh you know, no, so. that's not good. Uh, Raiders QB Carr got emotional at the podium as you alluded to it, right. uh, wondering if his team is going to step up and play the rest of the season. Drew is uh, I want to get I want to get your your sense on this but like it's usually or your take on it I'll give mine it's usually a bad sign when your quarterback has to come out and just like talk shit to the team you know like it, it it when they have to do it at the podium it's a bad sign so I think it could help but like how how do you feel about that whole situation you know what I mean were those were those comments directed at his teammates or his coaching staff I mean I think it was it had to be everybody, man, because we talked about the the player stepping up. I mean, we all know the coaching staff is not doing what they need to do. I think with the players that they have, there, it looked like there was times when Carr was getting the signals and he was looking at the sidelines, like, "Are you kidding me? This is what we're running." Oh man, I mean, Carr Carr should well. That's that's interesting because Carr should have enough clout in this league to be able to audible if he wants to. But I think I remember the last time vaguely hearing about Josh McDaniels being a power guy and just not mm-hmm. he's his, a his system. He's a Belichick yeah, it's his, it's his system. So yeah. I don't know. I, I can't speak to that. I really can't yeah. speak to that. But I will say it wasn't the coaching staff 
Foster Moreau dropping that pass that yeah. O'Kara can't broke up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. like it, it, so it's it was it was to everybody. It's, okay, you're right. You're right. You know. Yeah. That's but I, you know, I don't. I, he he's talking about he was talking about what they're doing behind the scenes. Yeah. I, Does I, McDaniel's make it out of this year? I think he makes it out of the year. I don't think they can bring that that guy back. I I feel like Las Vegas has enough for yeah. a coach to want to come in there. And, they should have kept that interim coach, man. He was riding high. Had him to the playoffs last year. Was it? It was Rich. It was Rich Bisacci, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. A spe- I think it was. It was Rich. Yeah. They should have kept Rich. Mm-hmm. Cardinals tight end Zach Ertz dealing with a substantial knee issue. Uh, done for the foreseeable future. He's still getting some tests done, but sounding like it's season ending for him. Yeah, that that sucks. Anytime that happens, man, that 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 sucks. So hopefully he can get well soon. Come back. I mean, you know, ACLs. Nine nine months these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll have them down to six by the way. <laughs> Just rushing people back, man. Uh, you will, man. Ravens wide receiver Deshaun Jackson dealing with a hamstring issue. Uh, back to the practice squad. <laughs> Damn, uh, that was that was that was quick. You know, he's a speed he's a speed guy, so it's if he the can't be a speed go, guy. Yeah, right? yeah, the hammies go. Yeah. Yes. Uh Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy uh dealing with not as severe of an injury as we once thought. We thought uh, uh everyone watching that game thought it was an Achilles, thought he was done. Yeah. After initial testing, he's still going to get further evaluation, but not as severe, looking like he sprained something behind his ankle. I'm glad. You, you know, like once the way that everybody looked, it it looked like it, oh, it was when bad, Sutton so. was like yeah yeah so i i was i was glad that that's that's good news to hear especially for for them russ was he was trying to throw some doms yesterday but fortunately it didn't work out for him, but yeah uh titans secondary player caleb farley herniated disc yesterday he will have surgery he is out for the season yeah that that sucks, man. He, he the, the start to his career just has not gone the way that his tape in final year at yeah. Virginia Tech said that it was it was going to go. Yeah. His, you know, so and I'm just afraid you don't you don't no one really bounce back from back surgery. Yeah, it it there's just a lot there's a lot going on in the back. Yeah. You know, and it's for, never for the same after you cut it up to do so. Yeah. Hopefully he can he can come back, man. But hopefully yeah. he can come back. Well, that's it for housekeeping notes. Suds, uh, who you shouting out this week? That's uh, Drew. Drew got a lot of interesting, interesting shout outs this week. The first, first, got to talk about it. NFL in Munich. Shout to the whole German experience, man. Oh, like, man, they were living it up. Living it up. The, like, in the fans, the, like, the size of the beers, Drew. Did you get a shot of the size <laughs> of the beers over yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, like, Early, what, too. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it, was, it wasn't early over there, but no, I'm just uh, saying, like early in the broadcast, they're like, bam, oh, yeah, bam. Damn. I was like, Whoa. Yep. I mean, like, Had take the, honestly, cameramen taking thinly veiled shots at the NFL because why aren't the beers that size? And we states? all know they don't need to be. Come on now, well, true, <laughs> true. That's very true. That's very true. Just kudos but, to the German people handling themselves professionally as well. Well, so I, they didn't I want to leave this. though. That's hilarious. So no, did you so see they didn't they, want to leave running on they, the field. They they kept the. Oh, I didn't see them running on the field. Nah, they ran on the field. Yeah. Damn. So they they kept the stadium open and they played red zone. Drew. Oh, like, nice. On the, on the jumbotron. So like, why leave? What? Exactly. And like you know, they kept the probably kept the the uh, the, the, the 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 concession stands open for for more beers. That what I'm saying is the NFL How much should money take do notes. They make? The NFL should take note. Like if people are having a good time, like if 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 you can behave yourselves, yes. you can keep the stadium open, yes. keep drinking, and then play red zone. Like if you got a one o'clock game, keep the stadium open, play red zone on the, did, you know what I'm saying? I would at maybe, least hang out for a little bit, like traffic exactly, clear out a little bit. Exactly. Maybe, maybe the losing team's fans are gracious, can still enjoy the NFL day. You know, they don't want, you know. Just make sure you behave yourselves. Yeah, yeah. So definitely shout out to them, the whole electric football atmosphere, seeing all that stuff. Drew, shout out to the female ref maintaining her professionalism in the light of Tyreek Hill's uh touchdown celebration. What shout shout idiot, to her, man. Shout what to her. Idiot. Shout to her. Yeah, that was uh that was great. She 
dipped out right out of the way, maintained her professionalism. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. she out here representing well, representing well. Shout out to her. Uh I, I know, I know Drew didn't see this one coming. Shout to Scott Fitterer. Shout to Scott Fitterer for flipping run CMC, getting that man in a good situation. And in light of all the scrutiny, because he knew what he had in Deontay Foreman. Okay. Yeah. This is really a Deontay Foreman shout out. Yeah. Because they don't set mean, him up though. For for this for this team to be able to flip CMC, get those picks, and realize what they had in Deontay Foreman, who was a capable back, gotta say shout out to the GM for doing that. I, yeah. That's a win. That's just a win for me. Um, gotta I do shout the right thing and keep Wilkes as their head coach. I need to see more. I'm sorry. That's I need fair, to. Yeah, yeah, I need to see. He's, more he's won me over, man. I think he deserves a chance. I mean, definitely. Bill Cowher said as such. You know, talking oh, about man. when he went on that negative rant. negative shout out to Bill Cower for that rant. Yeah. Man. He, yeah, I was always been a Bill Cower fan. Always been a fan. It was a it, it was a little trashy, man. It seemed tacky. Yeah. It seemed it seemed like nah, I'm mad. You know, like yeah, come on. yeah. It was it was it was a little elitist, like yeah. uh, coaching ranks. You like, know, bro, you was, haven't been yeah. a part of the coaching ranks for twenty years, so. Yeah. Yeah, so you're an analyst now, my dude. You ain't a coach. It's a great segue into my very next shout out, Drew. I didn't even mean for it to happen, but shout out the boy Jeff Saturday, man. Yes, shout out Jeff Saturday. Getting that dub, uh, getting that dub, leaning on his coaching staff, he leaning on the, the right way. Coaching staff that was a lot there. of smiles I mean, on just... those sidelines. A lot of smiles on the sidelines. Drew, Drew, I'll, I'll kick it to you for a second, uh, so you can go go off on the Jeff Saturday stuff. But like, what else was he supposed to do? Like yeah. those guys have been there. What are, what are the plays that they want to run? You know yeah. what I'm saying? What, what what does the team do well? Just put it in place. That's what a head coach does. Yeah. No, he leaned heavily on the guys that have been there that knew the personnel. And I mean, granted, everyone's forgetting that Saturday was a consultant for this team. So he knew the roster, I hope at least. So yeah, yeah. So he knew what he was walking into and he also knew the personnel that he had. He 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 had multiple offers to join the staff. And he wanted to hang out with his 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 family more as in the analyst role. You know, you don't give up those cush analyst jobs for nothing. Yeah. But a chance to see if he could be a head coach in this league, he jumped at it. Also, and he's oh, just a fault. product of what happened to him. We'd all say yes to that. Exactly. So I hate, yes, I hate that it's not uh, someone who's been in there, who's who's fought in the trenches with the. They kept saying all these coaches been in the trenches since like come on saturday's right. had plenty of camps get off my lawn trenches, you know yeah. so uh, yes it does it bums me out that they didn't give someone who was next in line waiting for it right uh, it, it it does bum me out that it's just another white dude as a head coach that right. sucks there's but, sucky parts about it right but it's not saturday's fault and he's doing the best with the situation and he gave kudos and props to his team and it was great yeah. And that, and that's another thing. I mean, like, I guess if we could touch on the whole, like, yes, the Rooney rule was not followed. I, I'm sorry, but like, it, it doesn't matter what color you are. If a, if an owner comes to you, like Drew alluded to and says, do you want to coach my team? Like armchair quarterbacks are saying yes. And yeah. it, it don't matter. Like we're, we're doing least, Even if you know you're only going to last like three games, you can go, like, I was a heck. Get, get, go get the check. Yeah. Do everything you want to yeah. do with Madden yeah. and, and talk about when you're on the couch on TV. And then, like, I guess before we move on to the next one, well, I'll say this. Uh, a negative shout out to um, the, the the football cognoscenti, the media and stuff like that for crapping on high school coaches. Like, like while they were taking shots at Jeff yeah. Saturday, they're like, oh, well, he was ju just a high school coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't disrespect high school coaches out there, man. Like those those guys, those are the they, unsung they heroes of this whole thing. Exactly. If you don't get people invested in high school, they're not going to make it to the league. Exactly. They're the funnel system. They're yeah. getting into they, the ground up. They're they're getting those guys to college to go pro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to high school coaches. Um, listen, I I, I shout out I, I, like quick shout out to Christian Washington. Three TDs. I had him down at two. Three TDs. So I messed that up. And uh, shout to PPR Fantasy Leagues. And this is because, like, PPR Fantasy Leagues should just be the standard now because I feel like they reward production without necessarily rewarding just touchdown production. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's so, how you – like, wide receivers work. Like, I can't imagine playing without, in that, without a PPR league at this point. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So shout out to PPR leagues. If you don't have one, join the 21st century. You know, standard scoring is is old, is, is dead. So that's where I'm at, Drew. All right, man. Well, this is my favorite segment. Let's do three and out. You want to do first out or you want me to? Uh, I, yeah, let me, let me, let me get into it, Drew. Let me get into it. I straight up want to ask you fire questions on the spot right now. Who is the scarier team, the Vikings or the Dolphins? Ah, I mean, the proof's in the pudding with the Vikings doing what they did and finding a a way to win, but that Miami offense is going to be something to knock out of the playoffs. Yeah. Like yeah. 39 on a okay Cleveland defense. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it it just looks so effortless. It just yeah. looks so effortless. And I feel like and you and you can speak to it on this uh, as well, but I feel like there's more that they have to show us. Yeah. You know, like we haven't yeah. seen yeah. they're going to give us they, the playoffs. Like, you, that man's thinking of 10 plays a minute, I feel like. So <laughs> <laughs> I think he sees a play go off and he's like, oh, we can do this to change it, you know? So mm. I, I think the Dolphins – I unfortunately think the Vikings go farther, but I think the Dolphins are the scarier team. They're just a product of the AFC, and that's going to be tough. Okay. I, I, wait, I feel like that was a great answer without and, and didn't even ride the fence on it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Dolph- just giving yeah. shout-outs to both teams. Yeah. But, yeah, good answer, man. Good answer. All right, second down with the Packers beating the Cowboys. Which head coach is less likely to be with their team in 2023? With the Packers beating the Cowboys. Yeah. Ooh. You got to think McCarthy's on the more of a hot seat or is LaFleur? Oh, man. And yeah, LaFleur's got some, he's got some, some, some questions to, uh, to answer. I probably am gonna have to say, I think, I think McCarthy's getting fired. Basically, like no matter what uh, happens. Yeah. I, well, I mean, he can I, save it, but you don't see if, that happen. If, if we, if, yeah, if we have to go between those two, because right now nobody saw Philadelphia coming. Dallas is supposed to be that team, and you know Jerry's got to be pissed that Dallas is it's not a, that team. It's tr- but how long Philadelphia? What and, and, the only thing that gets me, the only thing with all this talk, even going back to the beginning of the year mm-hmm. when all we heard was McCarthy's on thin ice, he won't make it out of the season. Like, right, you know, how, you remember how long it took for him to fire Jason Garrett? <laughs> but man, true. doesn't pull That's the trigger true. that fast. Yeah, so I don't know if he's learned, I don't know if point. that would those past experiences he'd be more inclined to have McCarthy on a shorter leash but you know what he says anything we're going McCarthy for another time <laughs> that's that's very interesting you're actually right but it's just like I think what I'm thinking of is that the 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 Sean Payton talk has just been way too hot and heavy you know for it not if he to gets be... snatched up quick by another team then right. I think that helps McCarthy out a lot that's very true yeah because then there's nobody else yeah. Right, it's just by default. So yeah, but out of those two coaches, I would likely I was, it's probably Lafleur is probably going to be there next year, yeah. unless it, Rogers throws a timber tantrum, <laughs> gets him fired. Rogers could get him out. Rogers could get that man out. But if Rogers retires, they're gonna need yeah. that offense. You know what I'm saying? They're, yeah. they're gonna need it to that that team to be in in Lafleur's mold, his vision. So I gotta say Lafleur. All right, what you got? All right, there, man. Bro? All right, listen. The I, I kind of like this question. I might sneak in there. I might sneak another one in there, but here we go. Third down, man. Drew, which team needs the first overall pick? Carolina Panthers. <laughs> Already, which which team unbiasedly? Yeah, which team right. un- needs the first overall pick more? So they are in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you you gonna do you gonna do this tournament style? Okay. First first three teams: Panthers, Lions, or Bears. Ooh, I'm gonna say, unfortunately, Lions. They got more like, but do they go for like? Do they they can go for their, you know, franchise quarterback? Get you know, C.J. Stroud, get Bryce Young. Yeah, or they can trade back and fill well, a bunch of 
needs and get a like couple uh, picks for it. They could with because you what we've seen in the past is when the quarterback crop is this good. Yeah. We'll at least maybe have some chatterings with some some trades and get some and I mean every year the price tag goes up and up. Well, I was gonna say I got I had three more teams for you. Like That's uh good. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Rams, Saints, or Raiders. Poor Rams ain't never gonna have another first round <laughs> pick ever again. I thought about that as soon as I said it. <laughs> <laughs> who are the other two two? Saints and who? Saints and Raiders. Oh, Raiders by far. Because yeah. why are the Saints not giving Jay? What are we not? What are they not telling us about Jameis? Why are they so hesitant to put Jameis back in? Because he did. He had him humming last year. He did for a while. He did. I, 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 I just don't know, man. I think it's the people just hate the turnovers. I mean, I, that's what that says on the surface. I, I just don't know. Like, is it? Is okay. It, so is put it his in leadership. Yeah, Andy I, I Dalton in there. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know. I. I don't know. You're right, but that's... so that's the only thing the Saints have uh, going for him, I guess. For they need it more against the Raiders. Is I still believe the Raiders have a quarterback. I still think Carr can be their guy. Right. He just needs a lot of help. So and maybe it, they'd be better suited being one of those teams that has like the yeah. 13th and the 16th pick, like the yeah. Eagles did last year. And we maybe we didn't think so with the Raiders, but it's it, what they're putting on tape is obvious that they still need a little something you know they, they they still need something so uh good good answer man i guess uh you rounding out uh fourth down man what you got so i'd be down with that lions first pick raiders second pick panthers third pick i'll take that i'll take yeah. it i'll take Keep that pressure off Keep yeah. that pressure off yeah. all right fourth down uh with the classic that minnesota and buffalo just gave us did anything you saw on Sunday sway you a little bit? Because we thought maybe Buffalo was that team to make it to the playoffs. Right. Now now maybe – I'm asking, who do you think now goes farther in the playoffs? Man, Drew, good question. And I think – we talked about it earlier how this game had everything, and I think it told us – it told us a lot. I I think that we need to be – leery of the bills making those like turnovers or josh allen really specifically making those turnovers in the playoffs because they cost them in a big moment like for as much as the bills were probably the favorite going into this game at home this was a high vikings team that came in and took it from them you know so like the vikings were no slouch they did lose the game the vikings won the game crazy plays had to make it happen but i think for the vikings though for as, as, as good as their record says they are, I'm just still like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I think it just really leaves me at a loss because I think it, it we didn't see what I think the – we didn't see the Vikings in their worst moment in this game. So I can't really say that, like, what I think is going to happen is the Vikings will wind up making the plays that the Bills made yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that is fully within their wheelhouse. So yesterday the Bills didn't make the plays. They showed you that they're capable of giving up a game. The Vikings, eh, they showed they're, they're capable of taking one over. So stealing one here and there. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, which team's going further? Damn, I, I said a lot of words. I, I will just say the Vikings. Okay. Yeah. Looking like NFC championship caliber team at this point, maybe. Based on a, a potentially down NFC, man, I think I think so. Like yeah. they they could make it. I'm not. I, they're not my pick right now, but keep playing the way you're playing. Yeah. It might it might be undeniable. I got you. All right, well, we're bringing back a segment that we uh, had last season. It's called Roll the Credits. Uh, it's where we're going to get a chance to to put our humble hats on <laughs> and shout out some people that maybe we might have been down on, but have proven us wrong we're, we're okay we can admit when we might have been wrong okay yeah so I'll, I'll start off the humble pie first congrats to a <laughs> you got that miami offense humming and i've been one of your least supporters this entire time you've been in the nfl so hats off to you sir you got a great great team around you and you're 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 playing great so i can't even i can't even be like they're carrying you bro like no nah, you're you're wheeling and dealing to 200 yard a game receivers so 
keep doing what you're doing. Uh, please, please, for the love of God, do not take any more blows to the head. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see some of the classics we potentially can see in these AFC playoffs with these offenses. All right. Good, uh, good start. I mean, I just have to come out and say it, like talking about quarterbacks, I got to say give the flowers to Justin Fields, bro. Okay. I was I, hoping I, you are going with that one and not another yeah. NFC North quarterback. Okay. No, nah, no. Nah, I got to give me – y'all never give me credit, Kirk. <laughs> Got to, got to, no, he, he, Drew specifically wanted to leave him out of the segment because it's <laughs> never happening, folks. It is never happening. But uh, Justin Fields, I didn't think that he was going to be, be not, not necessarily good, but I, I just didn't. You thought the Bears would ruin his feeling. Yes, I thought the Bears would ruin him. And he is doing what the Bears drafted him to do, and that's not ruin them, yeah. you know, or keep yeah. them in ruin. Yeah. So he is electric, man. That dude is electric, and he's As, good. He's with no receivers. With no receivers that is doing it with no when they protect him, he is throwing dimes and then doing everything what he's doing with his legs. So I gotta I gotta give my my flowers to Justin Fields, man. Drew, who you got to, who you got up next, man? My other one, I only got two this week. Uh my other one, uh Pete Carroll. We we, <laughs> we talked about was it Russ's fault Seattle was it that great last year? Was it Pete Carroll's fault that it was Seattle? And I said it was both their faults. Yeah. Turns out not the case. There was one <laughs> one person one at fault. fault. One fault. It was, not, it was not the seven year old coach. So shout out to you, Pete Carroll, for not only having a much better record than Russ has in Denver when everyone said he had a much better team, but also putting Geno Smith in a position to shine the way he is. So my man's a coach. And he knows how to get the best out of Seattle. And Tyler Lockett looks involved again. DK Metcalf bought back in. They they have yeah. seven. They have seventeen running backs that just always step up whenever someone gets. They just hurt. find a way, uh, man. Yeah, they just find Seattle. a way. Seattle. I hope you do. I hope you do some damage in the playoffs. One. So all right. So my I guess for my next, I definitely have to. Uh, I straight up trash Baron Browning on this show. <laughs> I trashed Baron Browning. I was like, man, he is he's not gonna be good. I didn't like his tape at all. And I was wrong. I was like, I was dead wrong. Like, where's the notorious BIG track? So uh, gotta give wrong. a shout out. Yeah, gotta give my shout out to him. Um, dude is just all over the field, and it might not, I mean, two and a half sacks at this point. He's got a pick, but he's just he's just a ball player, man. That dude's just a ball player. And that Denver defense is keeping them in games that Russ is trying his damnedest to not to, keep them in. Exactly. Worst investment. Worst investment in seven 2022. Seven years, bro. In they 2022. For seven years. Yeah, they're going to have to they, – they're, they're going to try to run from that contract. No, uh, some some, some, no one gonna some way, shape, it. yeah, I don't know, man. But hey, No uh, one's going to take that. And then also, like, uh, talking about trash, this was this was a long game trash on Baron Browning, so got to gotta get my flowers for that. But short game trash on Devin White, who played his ass off yesterday. He wasn't bored, man. Yeah, well, and, and <laughs> like, we got to, I guess on a more, like, quick, serious note, like, he just lost his dad out uh, of nowhere. Yeah, out of nowhere. Sucks. I think, like, he, he found out, apparently, when he was on the way to – the 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 stadium so maybe that might have had something to do maybe he knew his dad was in poor health things happening off the field maybe that kind of took a downturn with his play i don't know but to play the game he played in light of that gotta give him a shout out to him and he earned that seat yesterday he earned that seat yeah. he's 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 taking it he's taking it the right way it seems like he just he he needed to refocus and, and understandably so so fair enough yeah. Right now. Well, Sean, I'm excited to hear what matchups you got this week. Let's talk matchups of the week. All right, man. Listen, this matchup, I'm especially after a win yesterday by Green Bay. This Green Bay Tennessee matchup is looking <clears throat> nice and juicy. Yeah. Nice and juicy. T Tannehill back doing Tannehill things. Exactly. Ball off to Derrick Henry. And yeah. now, now, who would have thought this would be a running team versus running team? Yeah, yeah, well, and it is now. Well, hopefully Green Bay can keep that up. Not making that, that seems to, it might be the formula. And you already know what Aaron Rodgers can do if he has to pass it. 
that's yeah. like the perfect scenario for the Packers. So why right, wouldn't it be? Right. Because so they it, do, they might have to adjust. Cause I mean, I, it is the Denver Broncos. They did have Gordon and Murray, but they held them to under, uh, I'd say about 60 yards as a team for the yeah. Broncos. The Titans did. So, yeah. I know that I know Jones and Dylan are, are head and shoulders above those guys, but it would be Which very is, interesting to see if they can get it going. You want to know what's crazy that the Titans did that against the the Broncos? Guess they're thirty first in passing yards against per game. So that's that's how bad the Denver offense has been, basically. All you had to do is throw it, Russ, and you couldn't do it. <laughs> and it was interesting on the flip side that for as much maligned I feel like as the Packers have been defensively this year they're still third you know in that same category so that's going to be more Derrick Henry and I'm glad that this game is in Green Bay because like Tennessee's stadium is boring to me like it, like I gotta drop out every day bro right. right it just it just seems very <laughs> very boring no, so, I love the Nashville skyline yeah so their then their new stadium looks like uh a bowling alley I think like they've seen the yeah, rendering yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. yeah. whatever whatever, whatever it is Top like golf. Top that's golf. what it was. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I'm glad that it's in Green Bay. I hope that they get back to to the rushing game. And I don't for Tennessee to win this game. I think they're going to do half. They're going to have to do Westbrook Akine is going to need to keep being involved like yeah. he was yesterday. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, welcome to the league. <laughs> right. Or, well, or, hey, I can around. catch the ball. I know, but he always disappears. So hopefully right. he's like. Hello, exactly. and he sticks around for a little bit. Exactly, man. So hopefully, like, them boys can find some other receivers, and including himself, and, and not make it just about Derrick Henry, because I think Tannehill's going to have to pass the ball in this game. Like, I think they're going to they're gonna try to key in on Derrick Henry like everybody does, and Derrick Henry still in teams to do Derrick Henry things. So, you know, there we, go. We're, we are all better for this game. You know, yeah. do what you got. I got the battle of NFC, possibly a playoff matchup. We got Dallas Cowboys at Minnesota Vikings. Vikings riding high off of that huge yeah. win against Buffalo. Cowboys needing to bounce back after that overtime loss to the Packers. Uh, McCarthy answered. I know it's been a central theme uh, this this uh, this whole episode, but uh, didn't kick the field goal. He went for it on fourth down in overtime. Ended up biting them. Um, so can they bounce back against some a uh, very very strong owner role Minnesota Vikings? And uh, the, I want to see. We talked about Dak Prescott a little earlier. I don't know what Dallas is going to be able to do because they they lost this game, and then the way that they lost the Drew was kind of it was kind of heartbreaking. I could really see that loss being a two loss loss Ooh, okay. you know like that with because they Dallas arguably did everything that they wanted to do except with the exception of the quarterback right like yeah cd lamb got off uh gallop, they, 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 gallop he was there Schultz had some headed moves yeah they he i think that i feel like that's correctable but who is going to stop this minnesota team this is dallas should be highly motivated if they're if they if they want to get where they want to be you can prove it this week yeah, by, Micah by getting to Kurt. Diggs, exactly. You know, Diggs is going to be all over exactly. uh, Jefferson. I'm kind of excited about these matchups. Yeah, and, and the Dallas defense needs to show that they're the Dallas defense that everybody was talking about a couple of weeks ago, you know. And, and Dallas is still 6-3. and three. Like, they're not out of this right. thing, too. So yeah. this is a win that they – and this is a – this is going to have playoff implications. Yep. Especially if Dallas wins this game. So Dallas has an opportunity to beat the team that just beat the team. Right. Basically. And that, that's, that, that's, doesn't, that, doesn't that sound like this NFL season? Yep. Mm-hmm. So Dallas fans, y'all, y'all, y'all need to get in, in your in your team's ear and get yeah. them motivated for this game. You yeah. know, Minnesota don't have to do anything. I well, I, I won't even say that, but like Minnesota the pressure's just, off. It the pressure's off. But for this Minnesota team, they want to prove that they are the team that everybody thinks that yeah. they are not. And, I mean, like we said last week, you can't get too far ahead of Green Bay. So, especially if they start winning now, you don't want that gap to start closing. Nah, you don't. <laughs> Highly motivated game. Yeah. Highly motivated yeah. game. All right, what you got as right. your second matchup? All right, man. I This game right here, for is. It, it, it's crazy as the Charger season. I feel like it has been. It's got to be that Kansas City Los Angeles game. They're still only five and four. 
They're five and the four. The Chargers are only five and four. They are five and four, and an opportunity here to really write their season if they can just get some people healthy, man. I don't know what the injury situation is like coming into this game. Um, I know they're injured on the defense. I don't know if, they, if if some people coming back, you know, JC Jackson largely didn't work out. I don't know what happened there, but Justin Herbert still has the opportunity. Austin Eckler still has the opportunity to change the season around and get back on six and four and at least make this AFC West thing interesting because the Chiefs are starting to run away with it, Drew. Right. The, we, we thought it was going to be the strongest division. Yeah. Uh, and then we thought that a, 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 NFC East was going to be the the yeah. weirdest division. It's been the best. Uh, breaking news as we're recording, Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup suffered a high ankle sprain Sunday versus the Cardinals. Um, said it doesn't sound good. Someone close to the his prognosis. So, you think they they might keep that man out for the season? Why why rush him? Why play him? That, that's what I would sit be Stafford thinking. sit Stafford sit sit cup. Try to get uh, get Jefferson some reps. Get Make Robinson sure you, some reps. Get get that 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 high third round pick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ain't got nothing. <laughs> that sucks but hey that's what i keep telling myself when i'm bummed out about the panthers like hey we're not the rams we got draft picks <laughs> yeah it, it, it's, it's it's so funny that when you don't have them and those injuries just hit a little bit worse man yeah, you're, you're like, like who are we getting uh, to replace this guy nobody that's the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right all right my last matchup uh of the week we got the new york jets at the new england patriots this was uh, one of those lockoffs a few weeks ago where oh. I picked the Jets, you picked the Patriots, you were victorious. Uh, not going to fall for it this week, staying out of my locks this week. But um, all of a sudden, this AFC East is log jam mm. with the the Jets right there. Bills aren't number one, not anymore. Yeah, yeah. they're just they're all right there within a game or two of each other, and uh, still got to play each other a lot. So I'm very intrigued to see who gets the leg up. Can the Patriots sweep the season on the Jets? And then the Jets Man. end up winning the division? That would be crazy. It would be crazy. Drew, I, I when I look at this game, I think the Jets talk about opportunities, right? I think the Jets have an opportunity here to go on the road and do what the New England Patriots basically did to them coming into their house and beating them. Altered Sala, their momentum. He, they did. And, and Salah should – he should be he, he should be motivated to motivate his team to be able to 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 really take this on. It's it's still the Belichick effect though yeah. with this game, yeah. and I think that that big brother mentality. But like something about this game says that the little this might be one that the little brother just comes out of nowhere and like knocks the little locks the big brother out yeah. and you're just like where because i mean we didn't see it coming you know the patriots are still struggling offensively so yeah. the jets just have to get past this ridiculously good defense yeah and that's that they and they're they're at home come i think which which one of these teams are coming off a bye i want to say it's the jets patriots. they didn't play oh i think they both came off a bye yeah so i mean Oh, Jets got to play Belichick off a of bye. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, two weeks to prepare for this dude. Yeah, yeah. so a uh, lot of a lot of tendencies. I want to see how the tendencies play out in this game, but it, it should be interesting. One of the games that I'll be watching for sure. Yeah. Well, let's get in these locks because uh, your boy gained the game. I went two and zero. Oh, you went one and one last week. Ooh, so I, I got one back. back on you. Yeah, come back. Uh, I, I picked the Colts to beat Vegas and the Saints to lose to Pitt. Yeah, uh, and uh, the 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 the. <laughs> <laughs> the Bears let you down. Oh, oh. Had a great they game, did. but they we did. did Who would have thought this would be the week the Lions would figure it out and get it done? And, and what was crazy though is like go back last week and check that out. But I, I went back and forth between the Bears and the Lions on. And you knew I, you you know when you go back and forth, you always need to walk away, right? And it, yeah, you're right. That should have been the telltale sign. Right. And the game played out as such. That's why yeah. I was hesitant. So great, what a great game. Um. Yeah. But went one and one last week. Trying to go two and zero this week. 
I tried to pick some flashy picks this week for you. I tried to be like, bam, and I, I got one. But, like, there's not a lot of – It was tough. There's not a lot of surprise, maybe upset alerts this week. Yeah. Well, they, well there's a couple oppor- there's a couple opportunities. Theme of the show. I felt terrible about. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's why we don't pick them. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. trying to get the trying to get these. But I, I feel like I got two pretty pretty you know you know right. little it's juicy saucy juicy. there saucy. we go yeah, saucy yeah. picks saucy. so uh, we'll start with loss and I am right. picking the downtrodden Raiders to continue their losing streak against the Broncos. They Denver get uh, I know this is a sketchy pick because uh, they could tie. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but. The Raiders just look like a broken team, and it looks like their coaching is just going to keep getting worse. And Carr might have a mental breakdown on the field. So, and I don't feel like the Raiders' defense is scary enough to for Russ to keep rusting as hard as he is right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lock off because Uh-oh. I have the Broncos yes. losing this week to the Las Vegas Raiders. I think that. The speech and the passion yes. from Derek Carr ignites his team. Oh, okay. Gets Josh McDaniels okay. to take his head out of his ass. Oh, and put together. And Derek Carr is the one. He's going to save this team. I like. I just believe in Derek Carr. I believe in Devontae Adams. Those two have it going. It is the rest of the team that needs to step it up. And I think that is what it's going to take. That emotion from Derek Carr to put that team over the top finish off these Broncos at three and seven after this loss next week. Hopefully we got a lock off. I don't need you catching up to me. Right. All I, right. I, I'm just here and I get to gain another right. game You're real seeing, quick. Drew just seeing dollar signs. That's all yeah. I'm over here. I'm over here like uh money balling it. <laughs> uh, all right. All right my win. All right. This is where you gain a game back. If I do <laughs> win that uh, game, I, something tells me, in my gut that this is just how the season's gone and you know i hate this team so i'm not picking it out of because i want this to happen but very I curious got you about to say the cowboys knocking the vikings back down to earth the cowboys figure something out prescott's hearing the chatter he puts it together pollard goes off the cowboys steal one from minnesota ladies and gentlemen we have another lock off yes. the <laughs> vikings Get the win in uh, at home against the Cowboys. Two lock offs. Damn, we about to pull away or Drew's dangerously on my heels now. Uh after next week. Oh, Stay man. tuned high, for next week. High stakes yeah. in these games. Yes. Yeah. So we pit, both picked the same game let, and two opposite winners. That's fantastic. <laughs> let me sell you. That's how you know the emotion from this from this show shows you that we did not talk about it before. No. So, from the Vikings standpoint, they're rolling right now. And Dallas, I think, you know, coming off that hard for a loss, Mike McCarthy losing the Mike McCarthy revenge game going home, it's a lot to overcome. You know, it's a lot to overcome. The way that this Vikings team is able to kind of piece these wins together, be down 17 points, still come back. Now they get at, they're at home. They're still hot. Pat P wearing the chains now, that found the fountain of youth. Man, I mean, it, like Michael it, recovering fumbles, getting interceptions, the defense is gelling. It it is it's it's rolling downhill. That that boulder is rolling downhill right now. He can do no wrong at this point. And until he does, I gotta ride the high hand. So that's that's what I'm thinking. And doesn't that seem like it's all about to come crashing down? True. I mean, at the bottom of the hill, at the bottom of the hill has got to, you know, that's where all the debris is, you know. Because this is every now and then the Cowboys win a game they shouldn't win. And I feel like this is it. Drew's right. Part of the season, Dallas will win this game. Yeah. Just, to, just to throw some more dramatics into it. Yeah. Just to throw yeah. some more dramatic. Because, like, we, we, every week when we think we have these teams pegged, Hey, at least they, we both stayed away from Arizona this week. So thank God. And right. they face the they're facing San Francisco. Yeah, I didn't that want is, to touch that. <laughs> that is gonna be a wild game. Yeah. That is gonna be a wild game. Wild game. Yeah, I'd say they keep cold in. My man look good. Some chatter that that's that might 
Yeah, well, collars locked in. We need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go down that road. Oh, man. Sean, where can they find you? At the kids us on Twitter, man. At nickel underscore Dom FB and at nickel underscore Dom Football on the illustrious IG. Drew, what about you, man? Uh, at Laugh with Harrison on Instagram. Check out uh, all the great content on this YouTube page. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we are uh, on the home stretch here. The playoffs starting to take shape, and man, they're going to be great this year. I can't wait. I have no idea who's going to be the Super Bowl champion. That's the best part. I have no clue who's going to win this. No clear cut favorite. We got a couple, but it's a lot. So stay <laughs> tuned. Uh, we got more football action for you. We will see you next week. Take it, take it, take it, take it.